everyone. My name is Wendy Rolden. I am a third year PhD student at the University of Washington in a department called Human Centered Design and Engineering. And today I'm here to tell you about something that I'm really proud of that hasn't been published, that isn't in the journal, that isn't um, on a poster even. And it's serving the community that served me. So I'm going to tell you about how I've spent my past two breaks from grad school back home with my family, with my community, and working with kids. So we run work design workshops with 437 students. I don't know if that number is exact, but we've been doing this in the neighborhoods of Chicago that I grew up in, in Albany Park and in Mayfair. And uh, it's been with classrooms, so we've worked with close schools, but we've also been working with a library recently. And this work started in Seattle. I saw this happening around the university. I saw these workshops being done, being ran by awesome professors and PhD students. But I wondered what it might look like to bring it home with the people that I grew up with and what it might look like to apply that in that context. And so I built a Chicago team, starting with my sister up there and her peers who are in college. And then I reached out to friends that I knew from different organizations and they reached out to their companies. And then I reached out to my mom and I said, well, we don't have food, can you cook lunch for us while in between breaks because we're teaching these programs. And what the students are doing is they're designing a fast, they're engaging in a fast paced design activity called a charrette, 60 minutes where the challenge is design an app that um, would help a fictional character with their daily life. And I'd done this in Seattle where children were making SpongeBob find a job or making, I don't know, Moana. But in the context of the classrooms that we were working with, students were designing apps for their parents that was looking for a job in, in the classroom that we were working with. One student designed an app for his grandpa to share his ancestral dances with his community. And so in the first couple times that we started doing this, we saw the students changing the, the design app challenge for themselves. And it also, to me, I went straight from undergrad to grad school and I bow down to everyone that's a teacher, but I saw what it looked like to be in the classroom and try to engage students in the design process and some educators saying, well, your butt should be to the chair, your back to the chair, so what does it mean to actually engage them in this process that I had seen informally in the classroom? And working with educators and librarians, they wanted to start to do this for themselves and this was originally designed for the students, but what does it mean to sustain this after time? I don't know. And the behind the scenes is I'm shipping these boxes from Seattle to Chicago to get the post-its there, to get the tablets there, because the library that I'm working with doesn't have that technology yet. And also being flexible. This is what passing periods look like. And now that people are excited about this, they're like, oh, here are all the classes that we've lined down back to back. And I'm like, how do we clean up all the post-its in between 60 minute sessions? I don't know how to do that. Um, but being flexible with the team that we're working with and the different students that are coming in and now different community members that want to participate in this work. And this is important because this was a chance to bring my research home. I really struggle with being in grad school and feeling guilty for leaving home. And I get emotional because I don't know how to negotiate that tension. Um, and it's also because I can't not do this. So I've left my community and now what does it mean to come back and to not stop? I didn't, this is, didn't happen when I practiced. Um, <laughs> and so, I don't know how to sustain this, and I have all these questions about students saying, please, I learned how to do teamwork. When are you gonna come back? Are you gonna interrupt my next science period so that we can have this fun? And I'm like, I don't know if we can interrupt your next science period. Um, and so right now we're just collecting this information informally as the students are kind of saying what their, their experience are. But I don't know how to sustain this over time, like I mentioned. So what do we do to keep shipping these boxes from Seattle to Chicago? Or how do I partner with people that are there right now? Um, and then also educators want to do this with preschool students. And I don't know what that looks like pedagogically, but how might we support that? Um, and iterating. So as we've seen the students take these challenges and adapt them to their context, what does it mean to lead charrettes in Spanish? What does it mean um, to after they leave, they want to tell their parents about it? But how could I, I don't know, prepare a pamphlet for them to take home? And these are the questions that I'm thinking about is how my educators take these lessons and apply it to their daily practice. Um, because I'm seeing this excitement from the librarians and the teacher side um, and I just have all these questions. And that's kind of my last three slides is what do I do next? What responsibility do I have? But also what support is there from people in this room? Um, and then this is like, again, something that I've been seeing from the research to practice as a graduate student is now we need all these barriers and restrictions and tape and forms and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, maybe we could just do this in someone's house. Um, and how might we share these activities? Um, uh, I forgot here. 
taking into account, oh yeah, this I think this is the slide it's supposed to be about, like all the tensions or the barriers that now I'm starting to face and trying to figure out how we could skirt them because I still need and want and will bring these resources back home. And then um, how might we consider the implications of researchers when these communities are our own? So as you saw here, getting emotional, but then what does it mean to go back home um, and say, okay, I'm a graduate student with all these resources, but this doesn't exist right here. So thank you, this is my research and I'm really excited.